And here's the BP Ultimate Grid for race one at the Hamster 200. The BNT V8's Angus Fogg, the top qualifier ahead of Tim Edgell. What an effort from Timmy and John McIntyre and Craig Bed. Looking forward to seeing what happens at turn one when these guys hit it. Andy Knight on the third row. Andy Booth, a better qualifying position for the Big Ben Commodore. Paul Manuel and new addition to the field this weekend, Chris Pither. Great effort from him on debut. Simon Richards and Kane Scott. Kane blowing that rear axle on the sweeper and qualifying. He's looking to uh, turn things around. Hayden McKenzie and Darren Henderson. Nick Ross there in the Commodore next to Eddie Bell. Not having such a great weekend this weekend after a couple of great performances in the last couple of rounds. Andrew Anderson, Clark Proctor, 15th and 16th. John Whelan and Dale Williams. Dale Williams hoping for rain. He loves it when it's wet. Makes up for his lack of grip, he says, at the rear. Uh, John Hepburn and John Penny. And bringing up the back, Christina Orr and David Hopper. But even before we've started the race, forget what you've seen on the grid because everything has been turned upside down by the rain. It was there, then it wasn't, and we've got cars stuck in pit lane. Only a very few cars came off the dummy grid with wet tyres on. Subsequently, those cars decided to come in and change back to slicks, thinking that it wasn't going to be wet enough. Now it's rained, and those cars were stuck in pit lane. Tim Edgell, Craig Baird, John Penny, and I think uh, Hopper as well, they're sitting at the end of pit lane after it just puts wet tyres back on those cars. So it was looking terrible for them, especially for those top qualifiers stuck in the pit lane, but then everything changed around because the rain came back. It was that the teams would have taken in mind it's only a sprint race. They thought, we'll get through this OK, and of course, these guys would have come in and think, well, let's go back to slicks like the rest of the field got caught out and lo and behold mother nature played its part it's going to work in their favor yeah a little bit of rain just came down uh, only a couple of minutes ago johnny mack there sitting in uh, third position on the grid andy booth has got a clear run ahead of him there is no cars ahead of him on the outside of the grid but look at the weather the wipers are on this part of the circuit different surface here it looks like glass it's incredible you say andy booth's got the clear run but they're not clear skies and there's the review <laughs> through the front of Johnny Max Falcon, and that is horrendous compared to just a couple of minutes ago. And Mark, if you can just give us a bit of a rundown here on the rules that have changed, actually, uh, in the, uh, from the past. Um, these, the rules used to be they used to declare a wet race, and everyone had to come and put wets on, but now it's your choice, is that correct? It is, yeah, they've left the judgment up to the teams now if they want to change to wet and dry. So essentially, when they declare a wet race, the tail light or the high visibility light in the back of the car has to come on. That's the only responsibility now. So I can't help but think, guys, that uh, Timmy Edgell and Craig Beard will be like Donny Osmond smiling that much in a <laughs> starting from pit lane. Well, I, I couldn't agree more. This has changed dramatically. Everyone, as I say, part of, uh, uh, part of from three cars came out for the first warm-up lap on wet tyres. Look at this. Proctor already having a spin, trying to warm those slicks up. He is going to, everyone's going to struggle to get some temperature. Just 12 degrees, we've got rain. It's the coldest it's been all weekend. These conditions are wintry. And this is this is the warm-up lap. He's just trying to get some heat into the tyres, and he's in the grass. Yeah, this is uh, going to be treacherous, and I, I can't but help. I mean, if we were betting people, betting men, which we all are, what do you reckon? I'm uh, picking before too long those cars as another one goes off the road those cars on the wet tyres. So the other thing too they've got to keep in mind though, Greg, unlike the supercars, which is a single lock uh, quick change mechanism, these guys are still five studs, oh, so yeah, it takes it's so going to take so long. Yeah, it's, it's a very difficult choice to make now. I mean, you're going to come in, if you decide to come in now as the cars come round for the start, you're going to lose a lot of time. It's, it really isn't going to be worth it to change. Murph, Murph, I don't know if you're a told you so kind of guy, but a few moments ago we were standing beside the grid and you were suggesting to a few of the Holden boys, put on the wets, lads. Well, I was suggesting to whoever was really enlisting that I thought that maybe the, the real slick looking surface, as we can see the change here between the two surfaces, um, you know, it might be a sensible idea, but at the time, it was still reasonably dry. But this, through this section here, Mark, yesterday where everyone was having problems on this new surface, this is going to be just... I can't imagine what it'll be like on slick tyres. Well, there's no extra sight here. Yeah, cars has pulled in. Is that Paul Manuel? Paul, Paul Manuel's, Manuel's gone He's in. headed for the pits. Whoa, it looked... Oh, the car's oh, turning 90 degrees. Minute, last, last uh, minute change there. Angus Fogg out the front. Johnny Mack, here we go. The lights are going green. These guys on slick tyres, remember, Andy Booth slotting in a third. Hayden McKenzie, who loves the wet, will, uh, is making a couple of spots. Angus Fogg on the grass already. Andy Booth on the grass. Here go the guys on wet tyres out the pit lane now. Oh. They are going to demolish this field on wet tyres. Now, oh, here case, we go. This is not the drifting champs. This is lap one at the Hamster 200. Andy Knight's in the grass. Look at Craig Baird. Around the outside, he's going to lead, I reckon, just about... 
Oh, and Bob's gone. Bob gone. Oh, the guy, this is going to get untidy. The yep. officials are going to have to do something about this. There's, car, there's just no grip. Now, but what's interesting, though, let's look at the second part of the track where it hasn't been resurfaced. Look at, um, uh, sorry there, Johnny Mack has sprinted away to a lead here on these slick tyres. The track, as you can see, a lot of water now. He's doing a fantastic job there at the moment, but... So goodbye, Andy Knight. He's off in the background. All sorts of trouble right through the field, and there's oh, Angus Fogg. On the grass, wide. Johnny Mack had already taken the lead at that point. I can't... I, I, I would say that uh, Craig Beard's going to be leading this race very, very soon. This is the problem you're talking about, Mark. Very, very slow to change tyres. He's going to go a lap down without a doubt. And the reason being, Greg, is that the Keems just don't practice because we don't have to because the races are so short. But these guys are just tiptoeing. This is the ballerina part of the motor racing where you've got to be on the toes of your feet and ready to catch these cars because they will snap any second. Chris Pither moved into second position ahead of Andy Booth. Guys, look at Craig Beard. Craig oh, Beard. oh, Johnny Mack! Big hit. This is the part of the circuit I was talking about. Oh, oh no! Yesterday, Pither, oh, gosh! Bush. Here's this is going to carry on. Here is a red flag coming oh, up. Oh, no, all everywhere. The Craig Beard tipping toe in through. They are all four in the fence. Five. Count them. One, two, Kane's three, gone. four, five, six cars involved in that. Unbelievable. This is the slippery part of the circuit resurfaced. It's like glass. We saw Matt Halliday come off yesterday in the Porsche, but this is just horrendous. Your championship leader, Johnny McIntyre, both ends stoked in. Guys, that decision from the Beard, um, Edgel Fit, we didn't think it was the right thing. Here we go. This was always... Oh, lost it early, God, Greg. Yeah, the surface yep. here. Oh. That is a big, big crash, and that is a lot of work to do to try and get that car repaired. But this surface yesterday should have been should have been a tester for these guys to know what was going to happen. I mean, really, the incidents that happened in the wet in practice and in qualifying, you know, this was this was uh, on the cards. Okay, guys, and of course, and you're right, Greg, because uh, we saw the Porsches go in with Matthew Halliday and also Daniel Gaunt. Here we go in car. So here's the view on board. He's lost it already, guys. Oh, we before the corner. Line. Yep. So this is just, it's only a, a bit of a kink, but that was enough on the slippery surface to ruin his comes. day. Oh. oh, that is a big hit from Tether as well. Booth's not too bad. He's escaped that one fairly lightly compared to some of these other guys as Whelan goes in, I think. Yeah. Did you see there Andrew Anderson coming through just sideways right through? It is like glass or ice even. It's Johnny Mack okay. He doesn't seem to be just sort of holding his side there. Hopefully he's fine, but that was a big hit. And uh, that uh, Castro edge, Falcon not looking good. Back with more from the levels right after this. That's what's left of the field at the moment. Just drama in every direction. It started Johnny Mack. Johnny Mack. On wow. slick tyres on the new part of the surface where everyone had so much trouble yesterday in the wet. That is a massive shunt. Chris Pither comes in, loses control. Andy Booth. There is cars everywhere. John Penny there. Kane Scott having a spin. But look at that. Look at that. That is a, a huge impact by the Castro Edge. Johnny Mack car. Now... If you're confused about what's going on, so are we here, and there's confusion in pit lane also. Tim Edgell, who was in pit lane and started from pit lane after going back into change to wets, is at the front of the field. Craig Baird behind him on wets. Everybody in the field is on wets, but we're not 100% sure where some of these cars lie because of uh, the start of the race has been given, and some cars have now completed a lap, some haven't. Guys, I think the best way to handle this is wait until the race starts and see what Craig's on the timing monitor. Oh, even, even in the pits, <laughs> it is just drama everywhere. During the break, massive debate going on by team managers trying to work out where they should be on the field. There were teams changing to wet weather setups. Obviously, everyone's got wet tyres on now. It's raining again, that we can tell you. But as Mark said, let's wait till they restart and we'll have an order for you on the track. But uh, 
if you think Johnny Mack's day got turned upside down, I think everyone is in total confusion. Yeah, this this is going to uh, have uh, some massive debate, I have no doubt, after this completion of this race. Cool, his lights are off in the safety so car, car, so this race is going ahead, regardless of uh, of who's on the back of the train and who isn't. Now, just because they're on wet tyres, this doesn't mean that this section that they've just gone onto now, this resurfacing, is going to be too much better. Uh, Paul Manuel here, we're not sure about him, are we? Because uh, he came in just as the cars were coming to start the race, the first start, he came straight in the pits and changed tyres. He actually hasn't done the lap yet. To Mitchell, off he goes. He's starting, he's got a clear track. Look how slippery that is. No temperature in these wet tyres. Two different surfaces here, making this extremely tricky. Paul Manuel having to give way to, uh, is that Proctor down the inside of him at the start? That's an unusual thing for to see Paul Manuel doing, but all these cars on wet tyres now. Already a touch there, Manuel on Proctor. And I think we've only just seen the start of it. And you'll notice if you look at the track, they're talking about the two surfaces. The one that looks like glass is like glass. And the other stuff is the old surface with a lot more grip. Well, clearly, look at that. Look at the, the wet tyres pumping out that water off the circuit, which now is drenched. A lot of water down there. We've seen a, a, an incredible start to this race. A red flag, cars on slicks. As you see them flowing through now, still very, very treacherous, treacherous out there. Very topsy-turvy. Uh, Angus Fogg, who started from pole position right down the back at the moment after a spin on the first lap. But uh, no damage to his car that we know of. Proctor Look, there is bumper uh, hanging off after that little touch with Paul Manuel. And the good thing that Timmy Edgell has, and also Craig Veer to some respect, guys, is that they have that clean track in front of them now. Clark Proctor backwards. Just, when they get on the straight, you're going to see that haze, and it is very hard to see through that. So they're on the very slippery Ooh. stuff where that accident happened before. John Penny crosses the line in third position. Proctor down the inside of him into one. He's very confident with that Falcon. The VIP Pet Foods car looking good. He loves these conditions too. Well, this is, uh, according to the uh, official race order, Edgel leads from bed, John Penny, Andy Knight, John Hepburn, the local lad, Eddie Bell, Dale Williams. Then you've got Darren Henderson, David Hopper in ninth, and Simon Richards, 10th so far. And now looking at this timing screen, as I said before about Paul Manuel, he came, at, came into the pits before the, the actual start of the race. But he's just now flipped back up to fifth position so there's going to be a few arguments about some of these uh, these scoring uh, lap scoring positions as they stand at the moment. I have no doubt Penny sideways. Well, we heard a comment from the race director earlier that let's just sort it out in the protest room. So I think there's going to be a fair bit of that. But can we see where we're going? That's the view from Darren Anderson's car. And that is just ridiculous. I think he might have a bit of a clearer view from where he's sitting. Uh, that part of the windscreen very far up. I would hope he does anyway. Of course, the, all these cars that adopt the same technology as the supercars, and, and you can see they have heated front elements in them. So you turn them on, the theory is the fog disappears, but it hasn't quite worked. But I can safely say, guys, and you might find this a bit ridiculous, we used to use Turk 2 and 1, uh, and a lot of teams have actually developed that, and it works oh, magnificently. Manual. Paul Manuel. That's uh, turn 1 into turn 1. Oh, everyone's going off. He's recovered. John Penny, as well, has lost a lot of positions. Very, very slippery out there. As you see replay. There's Manuel, oh, Manuel coming down. I think Manuel, did he get a touch there, mate? I don't know. Uh, just looked like too much rear brakes the rears, away yeah, Locked the rears, trying to pass John Penny. Now, you got to remember that uh, Tim Edgell and uh, Craig Beard, they started from pit lane originally, and here they are leading the race. Clark Proctor, man. The inter interesting thing fire. about this battle with a bit of luck is that Beard team will be communicating to him and saying, look, the championship leader's gone. You couldn't hear at the championship lead or certainly make significant inroads. Finish this race, second or third, you're still going to be the winner. Yeah, Proctor's looking very racy, and uh, Beto's going to, yeah, he's going to let him through here. That car, very, very fast at the moment, got some big speed. And uh, Proctor was ex very fast in testing uh, in the wet, so uh, he's showing, you know, carrying that speed forward, no doubt. Now he loves it sideways. Meanwhile, Craig Beard, who's dropped to third, going into this race, 71 points adrift of Johnny McIntyre big news is his smash means he's not going to score a point from this race so theoretically Beardo was to win he'd lead the championship. Well we, we also got to look at the fact that we have the three races now on one day to Sean and uh, the, the amount of damage to that car you know are they going to be able to get it out at all for the rest of the day.
he runs inside Eddie Knight, who runs very, very wide, gone in a bit deep. Williams takes another spot, moves into behind uh, behind Manuel. A couple of outboards on the back of that, looking at that pass. And that's into sixth position, so uh, doing very, very well. Struggled in the dry and didn't qualify very well. It made some, making some good progress here, he'll be very happy. Guys, look at the time you monitor here. Timmy Edge on Clark Proctor are just in the class of their own. They're circulating, you know, one, 1.3 seconds quicker than third place Craig Beard. But Interestingly, Tim Edgell is giving nothing away to Clark Proctor. In fact, he's slightly quicker. So are we going to see his first ever race win in the NZB8s? Well, let's hope uh, he's, dri he's been driving superb. And we commented about uh, Tim Edgell's performance at, at Teratonga and how mature he looked and his performance. He obviously had an issue in the last race, got caught up in an incident, which um, affected his result. But the first two races, superb bit of driving. He qualified very, very well on the second, on the front row, on uh, next to Angus Fogg. And doing a very mature job here in the wet in the Chester's Falcon. Well, we watch Clark Proctor when he drives in Target New Zealand. He does it in a, a turbocharged three-litre V6 Escort. He loves going sideways. And despite that bumper, it's not working as much of an air brake. He is making massive inroads on the back of Tim Edgell. Yeah, really impressive. I mean, the, the rain the rain comes down and the equaliser happens. I mean, uh, some guys just... Uh, perform in these conditions and also comes down to car setup and, uh, and having the confidence to drive it and not make a mistake so these two are fairly dominant as you say mark i think um beto's been given that uh, that call mate you've got a uh, you know a solid third place here and uh, go for performance the other thing which you're going to have to watch is see if there's going to be any developments from the officials with that bumper hanging off the back of Proctor's car. We've seen them bring other cars in before. Here we go. Tim Edgell ran a little bit wide through that section. Proctor down the inside. He's so confident in there. Edgell's not going to give way, but Proctor has the line, and uh, Timmy takes the uh, takes to the grass to avoid contact. Look at that. This is just amazing car control from these guys out front. We go back a little bit. Uh, Kane Scott. Oh, Foggy super sideways through the, the slippery stuff. Andy Booth wouldn't have wanted to be looking in his mirror then to see that. It's incredible. Looking at the map of the track, that turn 10 looks like a fairly benign corner, but throw in the surface and the conditions, and it's horrendous. These guys really struggling back here. Uh, Kane Scott, Andy Booth, and Angus Fogg. 17th, 18th, and 19th currently, and not making any inroads at all. Well, we know for this track when it's dry, you can be one, one and a half seconds off the pace and still hold the whole field up. And of course, it just gets worse. Throw in the visibility issues, you can understand why these guys aren't making the inroads we would have expected. Well, that, that crash, these conditions have just turned everything upside down. On lap eight of the opening 12 lap race at the Hamster 200, it's Clark Proctor who leads and he is just fearless in these conditions and um, demoralizing the field currently with the lap times that he's putting in. He's uh, in a league of his own. Kane Scott here, I reckon, is really struggling. He's holding up Andy Booth and Angus Fogg. That car doesn't look very happy at all. He's unable to, re uh, to put it where he wants to. Because we did see them do that, uh, the, the suspension change when they had the opportunity under red flag, but of course, you actually see Nick some of the dry lines. Across underneath Hopper down the front straight. Great move there. And grabs a spot. Nick's been showing some really good speed in the last few events, but uh, not having the luck that he's need that uh, that is needed. And uh, hopefully he will uh, make some progress now that he's cleared himself from from Hopper. Well, Greg, you might be feeling you know that you made the right call before the race. You said get on the <laughs> wet, so you got that, but. Something else might you feel good. I think this is going to be the best finish this year overall for the Holmes. Oh, that, that would be nice, mate. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. But uh, it, very difficult to make a decision. I mean, I hate being in this position, sitting in, in the car with a crew that's looking outside going, well, what do you want to do? And you're going, well, what do you think it's going to do? And no one wants to commit because no one wants to be wrong, of course. And, uh, you know, who knew it was going to end up being as wet as this, you know, uh, just before the race started. Is uh, Boothie... Puts the nose down the outside. Foggy comes up the inside. His nose gets cut off. Booth really looking for a way past this Fujitsu car, which is clearly struggling. Well, Kane Scott, the champion, reigning champions, yet to win a race this season. He went all out in qualifying. He very oh. aggressive setup. Anderson. Only to blow his rear axle. So it's been a heartbreaking weekend for him. Good move by Andrew Anderson. He goes up the inside of the Penny Holmes Commodore. Hopper struggling, Kane Scott right there, this bunch. 
all working very hard. Guys, the other thing too, which to take into consideration here is that the new surface, of course, and it's like a glass table, it's immaculate, but it has nowhere for the water to go. And you go back to the existing part, there's a lot of bitumen in it, the water actually gets pumped away. So that's why we've seen some lines wet, some lines are starting to dry out. Bumper adrift, but Clark Proctor, he has showed the way. A super result. He'll be very happy. That team doing a fantastic job. And Clark Proctor, the bumper's flapping. It's not slowing him down. He wins race one. What a display. And the wet crate oh. bed second. And no, Bell and in Edgel across oh. the line. Eddie Bell flying in the rain, but it uh, looks as though Edgel's just held him out and by, they, by six hundredths of a second. What a great finish. And here's some of the guys who are expected to do so much better. Andy Booth fighting right to the line with Angus Fogg. Oh, this is interesting. Booth on the outside through there. He's going to have to give way. He does. You wouldn't want to be too Ooh. wide, and the car still gets sideways through that corner. Those guys fighting there for 16th position. So it's a disappointing incredible. run for them. What a fight for such a position. And Chris Pither looking sick, but he finished. And well done, Clark Proctor. He looks like he's got a bit of sweat on. He was working very hard in that car. What a way to start the day. And just seeing how happy Clark Proctor is hurts me to say this. Everything's been turned upside down. Craig Baird, in fact, has been judged the race winner due to the confusion at the start, Murph. That means he takes the lead of the championship. The official results put him ahead of Tim Edgel, Eddie Bell, and uh, Dale Williams. The boat certainly did its job, but uh, Clark Proctor way down the results. That, that's heartbreaking stuff. Johnny McIntyre, mate, that must be devastating, the feeling of looking at the car like that after what just happened. Yeah, it's, um, it is. It's just absolutely gut-wrenching. Um, obviously, we made a really good start, and um, I just thought that, you know, I'm just going to cruise around here and puddle around. Um, and it was the puddles that got me. It just The car just aquaplaned. had no control at all as a passenger, and it just sped up as it went into the tyre wall. Um, and sort of behind the belts of that tyre wall, there's, um, there's a good old-fashioned wall full of uh, dirt and tyres, and um, that's really done a lot of damage to the car. Were you worried when the other car started sliding towards you as well? Yeah, well, I didn't even think about that to start with. I was just, um, I guess I was crying into my tea there for a bit, and then I had a look over, and here we go, some cars coming at me. So we're quite lucky where they got.